We're shortly going to start talking about reactions that create alkenes, and sometimes you get mixtures. You can get more than one possible alkene, and that sometimes has to do with putting a double bond at the end of a chain versus in the middle, and sometimes it has to do with making trans isomers as opposed to cis, and we tend to make the most of whatever is most stable. So that's why we're looking at these stabilities here. And what this shows us is that among these molecules that all have four carbons and eight hydrogens, one butene is the least stable. It's releasing the most amount of energy when reacted with oxygen to form CO2 and water. Uh, the two butenes are both more stable than the one butene. Notice they start off at a lower level, so that means they are more stable. But notice the trans is a little bit lower than cis, so the trans isomer is more stable. It loses less energy when we combust it, so it had less internal energy to begin with. Um, this last molecule, 2-methylpropene, uh, is the most stable, as it turns out, although that one's not so important because it's kind of a one-of-a-kind molecule. Uh, what is important is what we can conclude about the relative stabilities of having the double bond in the middle of a chain versus at the end of a chain, and it's always more stable for it to be internal, so to speak as opposed to it being a terminal double bond, like in 1-butene or 1-pentene or 1-hexene. Uh, and also trans isomers uh, tend to be more stable than cis. Remember when we were talking about cis and trans regarding substituted cyclohexanes, we couldn't always say cis was more or less stable than trans. It depended on the positions of the alkyl groups. But it is true for alkenes that trans isomers compared to their cis cousins, the trans is, is always more stable. So that will help us as we start to talk about the likely products that we make when alkenes are created, because the stable ones tend to be made in higher amounts. This slide generalizes that idea. When we talk about the 2-butene being more stable than 1-butene, we can say that the 2-butenes here, both cis and trans, are more substituted. Compared to plain old ethene with nothing but hydrogens hanging off of that carbon-carbon double bond, any time we add alkyl groups like methyl groups or ethyl groups, whatever, that uh, confers stability. So 1-butene here has just two hydrogens on one side of that carbon-carbon double bond. On the other side, we've got a hydrogen and then finally an ethyl group. So we would say the 1-butene is only mono-substituted. It's got three hydrogens plus that ethyl group. Whereas when you put the double bond in the middle of that four-carbon chain, we get di-substituted alkenes. The cis-2-butene and trans-2-butene are di-substituted. So is this one at the end, by the way. It's also di-substituted. But uh, as we go to moving that double bond into the middle of a chain, it's going to automatically make it more substituted, and so those types of isomers tend to form in higher amounts. And given a preference between cis and trans, trans isomers form in higher amounts. And that, as it says at the bottom here, is due to the bulkiness of those methyl groups trying to stay out of each other's way. And the bigger those alkyl groups, the bigger the preference for a trans versus cis. So those are rules that are good to help us simply look at alkenes and rank them relative to each other, but also when we're talking about reactions, being able to predict what the major product might be. That's what's coming up next.